Good afternoon. Happy Saturday, World Wide Web. This is James, your favorite ticker picker, with another update video on AMC Entertainment Holdings. $4.93 a share. Uh, up and down, back and forth. Uh, five day chart right here. We're going down to 470 ish and peaking around 503. Uh, it's kind of back down as if the full dilution was going on. Uh, that fake news, I guess, was fake news. They're just going to redo the plea agreement. The judge is going to procrastinate the ruling. Judge might throw this one out, too. I don't know if it's going to shoot up like it did last time, but it might. Um, and if the judge accepts the ruling, I guess it's going to uh, stick around here somehow, and we're going to have 1.5 billion shares uh, in this company outstanding. Um, Barbie, absolute stellar hit, might be the greatest movie of all time. Uh, we're going to see how it compares to Avatar in the end, but it, eat, it beat Avatar's first week, Avatar 1 and Avatar 2. Uh, so July was certainly an interesting month. Um, the Hollywood uh, Screen Actors Guild and the writers are now on strike, as you heard. Um, I have a friend that's a uh, actor. He lives in New York, and uh, he's been in like 50 things. Um, and he's a client of mine. And uh, I asked him today, I'm like, minimum minimum wage for Screen Actors Guild, just like for an extra, it's um, $1,080 per day is the minim minimum wage. That's minimum wage. And I asked him what, what they were looking for, you know. Like, what, what, why? <laughs> I, I don't get it. Um, you know, for Matt Damon to walk out of the uh, premiere of his movie and uh, all of these people to be on strike, even the ones, you know, maybe they're in support of their uh, smaller paid people. I don't know. A thousand a day for an extra when you're one of a thousand people that are probably just in the streets walking around, not even talking in the movie. I don't know how much you think you should get paid. Um, but yeah, this is like a lot. And I don't know if they're going to get what they want. And I don't know how long they're going to be on strike. And I've never known a striker to cave yet in my life. It always seems like a concession. The strikers seem to just hold and hold and hold. Uh, my f spidey sense tells me that uh, Hollywood's going to go in another direction with this. I can see, they can see that Tom Cruise isn't going to pack a theater anymore with his name, uh, unless it's Top Gun Part 3. And even uh, Harrison Ford is going to flop miserably with Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, nobody wants to see George Clooney anymore. Uh, I don't know if Brad Pitt can sell out a theater anymore, but I guess maybe a little bit. Uh, but nothing in Recordsville. The ones that are hitting really big and doing three times more than um, the the uh, uh, regular movies are, are the cartoon movies. Um, the, the Minions, the Avatars, the Barbies. Uh, Barbie did get some real actors in it, though. Um, but you know what I'm saying? A, a lot of these, it seems like the, the future of the upcoming film seems to be a lot of stuff cater to families, kids, and good humor, and, and good Marvel storylines, and things like that. Um, a lot of these movies, some of the best ones in history, uh, uh, come from nobodies. Uh, you know, Hunger Games, Jennifer Lawrence, uh, I don't think anyone knew who she was. Now she's a superstar. But when she made that big movie, she was a nobody. Uh, Goodwill Hunting, nobody knew who those guys were. Now they're making three movies a year each. Um, but yeah, you don't need George Clooney in your movie for your movie to do good. You need to make a good movie. I find it much more believable when there's a character that I haven't had to add 10 names for already in other movies. Yeah, I find it much more believable. Um, people do play, uh, good roles over and over again. Uh, without a doubt, I can't argue with that. And, and name marquee, it probably does make a difference. Um, as far as AMC is concerned, what really generally is going to bring in people to the seats is something that uh, they either want to see or are being nagged to see. Uh, kids saying, Mom, I want to go see this uh, is very powerful. 
And the movie theater is kind of like a babysitter and just to shut your kids up for a couple of hours and get them some entertainment uh, so you can stretch your legs and, and, and be in peace yourself. Uh, it's kind of a wonderful thing. It's almost something you can't do at home. Um, I think the future of the movie theaters is very strong uh, with or without the writers or the actors. Uh, I think they'll just find new ones and there's probably a lot of people getting their screenplays looked at and getting their uh, interviewed and their, and their uh, whatever they call it, uh, their testing of their acting abilities and, and trying out new people. I, I don't think it's as hard as uh, being in the NBA or anything like that. I think a lot of humans can you know pretend they're talking to somebody else. And after 40 takes, you could probably get it right with some editing. Um, yeah, I think we're going to see some new people in movies. We're going to see some new stars. I don't know if this thing's going to end. I can't see the Hollywood caving to this. As far as AMC goes, um, about uh, uh, the record earnings, what is the earnings date on this thing? Um, pooh. AMC stock has been on the threshold securities list since tw June 23rd. I don't think that's good. Bears traders swarm AMC options as stock conversion plan faces doubts. Oh, Christ. I just got rid of my AMC put options. <laughs> they were going down. I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to mess with this. The apes can be saved. Will this be the best week ever for AMC stock four days ago? Uh, it doesn't look like they released earnings yet. When is the earnings date? Let me check and find out. One sec. And it's scheduled for August 8th. Wow. What is that, like Monday? Uh, Tuesday? Good Lord. Coming up here. It's going to be a monster. It's going to be a blowout. With Barbie on the back of everybody's mind, I think this thing's going to have one hell of a week. I don't think it's got bottled up energy where it's already gone up so much that it can't go up. Uh, it went up to 498 after hours a little bit. Probably in anticipation. Uh, a lot of these things have been doing flops after good earnings reports. Uh, and a lot of them don't. Some of them just double. And I have no idea. Um, but yeah, there's so much uncertainty around the future of the uh, clacking of the shares of the future dilution. There's going to be a lot to punish it. But it's going to be great news. It's going to probably be a great day, I would assume. Um, and I just don't know how much all the other fears are going to weigh on it, to be honest with you. Um, if the judge makes the ruling and shoots him down again, you know, on, you know, comes out on Monday and does it on earnings day or whatever, then, uh, yeah, we might see a double boom. <laughs> so you don't know, you don't know what you're going to see, but, uh, yeah, um, Hollywood, Screen Actors Guild, they're going nuts in New York today. They're all picketing, the, the actors, uh, they're all out there marching around with their signs, uh, chanting about how they need more money. Um, four ninety three a share. Uh, I think the future is still good. I, I, the, the future is excellent. Uh, they're going to get it done no matter what they got to get it done to write this ship. Uh, I think they're going to write it on the backs of the uh, shareholder as I put uh, put out in my previous videos um i don't think the screen act if anything they're going to save money and make more profit in hollywood that's not going to help amc any but i guess if hollywood has more money maybe they'll make more better pictures i don't know if there's a correlation there they're probably plenty rich already um but yeah amc uh, just waiting until the 8th and I guess uh, at least we can enjoy uh, my prediction and see if, 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 if I'm right or if the analysts are right. I'm kind of excited. Um, so far in every video I've done, uh, I haven't missed one yet that didn't go up tremendously after I said, go get it. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Some of them crashed heavily afterwards. I'll give it that. But uh, some of them... Uh, I mean, I, when I look back at my account, at the cr stuff that I sold, um, you know, because I didn't think it was going to hit or I didn't think I was on target anymore or I just didn't see it going my way, uh, they all turned around and went my way tremendously at some point. 
Do I wish I would have kept all of my AMC options? Uh, yeah, duh, I would have made 10 times on my money. Uh, do I wish I would have kept my Regal options? Yeah, yep, I threw away a pile of money there by getting rid of those. That was really stupid. Um, yeah, so I had just uh, several, several misses. And uh, Ford went up two bucks for me. I was absolutely killing it on Ford. Now it's in the disaster zone again. It's coming back up. Um, but yeah, it just went, this was just a, a abysmal week for the stock market. I don't know if it was the Dow going down or just everything sucking wind at the same time. Uh, the airlines are putting out, uh, mega earnings and getting punished for it. Uh, and I get that a little bit only because they're only like, I mean, they're fully booked and their planes are full, but they're only fully booked for like a few weeks out, maybe a month out. Uh, the cruise lines are getting beat up right now. They're fully booked for uh, six months out. So that one I get, I, I really don't get. And I and I realize the cruise companies, uh, the third quarter is the best quarter of the year for them. But Q4 is fully booked. So what that even means, I have no idea. Uh, there is no best quarter for you this year because Q3 and Q4 are fully booked. And you just raised your prices yesterday for Norwegian and Carnival. They both raised their prices. They both did it together. Uh, very refreshing to see. We're going to see analyst reports on those companies coming over and over again. But uh, technically, I haven't missed one. I've just had crappy timing on my own personal end. Uh, I fret a little bit too much, and I need to uh, hang, hang in there sometimes and just uh, realize that shit happens. And I bought long-term options for a reason, so I can uh, wait till shit happens in my favor and make myself a winner. Uh, I don't think I'm going to hang out for earnings reports anymore uh, in general. I'm probably going to just play the hype up to the earnings report. That's probably going to be what I'm recommending from now on. Uh, what we witnessed over the last week was completely avoidable. Um, the carnival episode was completely avoidable. Uh, what's going to happen to AMC after earnings? I have no idea. Um, it might be avoidable too. Who knows? Uh, the airlines could have been avoidable. They all jockey up like monsters before earnings. We make plenty of money before earnings, especially if you're playing long times options. Uh, you don't need to go for the 500 to one necessarily with all of your money. Just play it safely right up until you know, maybe a half a week before options or something or a week before options and uh, sliver out of there and just call it a month in advance. Uh, make your make your decisions that way. That just seems to be safer. It seems to be more stable. It seems to be more predictable. It seems to be more consistent. Um, I'm going to keep investigating this theory and, and see how much truth there is in that. Um, the percentage of which ones fall on their ass after a good earnings report is get is looking like it's really high lately and i i don't like it and it's very disturbing and very confusing and uh since when though you know and then some of them uh go absolutely crazy carvana from 25 to 50 dollars seriously because they lost less money in a market where everything's overpriced and cars are seven or eight percent they had a fire sale and that thing went up to 50 bucks and uh, it's just like chilling out there now. It went back down to 40 and then back to 50, shockingly. I was like, good Lord, I can't even win on that one. <laughs> I got put options at 50. I'm like, this is stupid. And you know what? It's still stupid. And it's probably going to go backwards. But the market's acting really weird. Uh, the Spirit Airlines option, to me, is the most exciting and uh, predictable best bet that I can find right now. Um, the, uh, December 15th, um, oh no, the one that expires in 42 days, uh, from today, I think it's September 15th expiration date, uh, just the, uh, $12 strike, strike price, I think you can get for 17 cents right now, and that one is, uh, that's going to be one month before court starts. So I'm thinking there's going to be a lot of jockeying up again. We just watched the jockeying happen for the last month. Uh, Spirit's been pushing $20. 
over and over and over again. I did it last month and uh, I did it uh, at a worse level than this actually. And I made six times on my money. Uh, it was real fun. Good feeling and uh, happy to play that one correctly. Uh, I also got December options at, you know, for after the judge is done ruling on that case. Uh, those were $75 when I bought them. Um, and I should make $750 for every option I have uh, if he rules properly. Uh, in that case, I may not wait for the ruling either. Uh, to get rid of it. I don't even want to hear the rulings at this point. I don't want to hear the earnings reports. I don't want to, uh, I want to predict what they're doing still and how that's going to go and what everybody else is seeing because they're seeing the same thing we're seeing. But I don't know if I want to play these earnings reports or judges rulings. I'm probably going to uh, play that Spirit Airlines up to $24 and, and then, you know, then get out of it before the judge even clacks the gavel. Uh, I'm not going to gamble the whole money wad plus my winnings on a 50-50 coin flip at that point. Not after I already made 10 times on my money or five times on my money, you know, or in Carnival's cases uh, or Norwegian's cases, 2,000 per 3,000 percent on my money. Absolutely insane. Some of the money you can make with long-term options. Uh, everyone should look into them. Uh, the market in general, I don't know. That's how my theory is going to change. That's how I'm going to try to mature as a trader. I'm going to try to uh, avoid news uh, that is uh, like earnings and rulings and things. I'm going to take what everybody thinks, and I'm just going to play with that. If everybody thinks that the, ju that the judge is conservative and they're going to rule for the JetBlue merger, you know that's exactly what they're all going to think. And uh, Spirits at $16 right now. Um, one incredible buying opportunity. The buyout price is $31. It's a 50-50 coin toss. Let's just pretend. Even though he's a conservative judge, it's probably an 80-20 coin toss in your favor. But in, in at worst scenario, it's 50-50. And a uh, 50-50 coin flip that pays you 10 to 1. You should just do those all day long. And if you did them all day long, you would just win all day long. It would be like cheating. They shouldn't make rules like that uh, where you can cheat that easily on a coin toss getting odds like that. It's just insanity. Um, but yeah, you can go make 10 times your money on this judge's ruling. And I think it's a 50-50 shot. Worst scenario, but probably a 90-10 or a 99-1 just because he's a conservative judge and this is number six and number eight clacking together or number six and number seven. This is not a monopoly. Um, they're not going to win the court date. I think everyone realizes that. That's why this thing was up to $20 and going up of almost a buck on many days. Um, a spirit airlines I'm talking about, but just going around the world and observing what's going on, uh, possible recession in the future. Um, Play things, uh, maybe consider doing what I'm doing if you like that idea. Um, yes, you're going to miss out on the home runs, but you're gonna, your winning percentage is probably going to go way upwards. So I don't know what's better. Um, so we were going to have to see on that one. But, I mean, Carnival delivered plenty well before earnings. Norwegian, uh, plenty well before earnings. JetBlue hit 9 bucks before earnings. Um, AMC hit $8.80 before earnings. Um, and uh, Roku is at $92 right now, uh, after earnings, but they were way up there before earnings. Um, every single stock we've covered on this channel has just shot up like a rocket ship before earnings. And, uh, only Carnival performed big after that earnings and Roku, um, yeah, so it's really it's really confusing, uh, and I'm starting to think about what you know, what the danger is, and I think the danger is the earnings call and the rulings, and do we really need to play them? I would like to submit no, we don't. Uh, have a wonderful uh, Saturday. Uh, good luck to AMC. Um, at this point, uh, I don't know. I 99 out of 100 videos on YouTube are talking about short squeezes. Um, I don't know. I don't know. 
I think everybody knows how much money they need to come up with. Everybody knows about their bonds. This isn't news. You have companies like Antira Capital sucking up 10% of the company. You have uh, hedge funds, big players, day trading, people that are all day geeking out on this. They know exactly what everything is. You're not going to find any real news on this channel for them. Those people aren't going to, you know, enjoy this news because uh, they knew it like, you know, long before I made this video. So keep that in mind also is uh, the, the decisions are kind of made. Um, these big players are going to uh, do what they do and they're going to base it on what they predict. And uh, there is a fear of some kind of a future dilution with this one, clearly. Uh, and I think it's obvious that everybody knows they're going to pay off a bunch of debt but with another dilution. because they, They're going to need more cash to do that. They already spent all their further, all that APE money is gone. Uh, it's not sitting in a vault somewhere. Um, but AMC and everything else, everybody, uh, maybe, uh, I don't know. In five days, it went up 5.57%. In one day, a half a percent, and then four, oh, up another percent. So one and a half percent. You know, not a very good boost. Just uh, not a very good boost. Um, me personally, I'm going to wait for the new AMC company. I'm going to wait until they're done clacking them together, until they're done with the reverse split, until they're done with their... Uh, uh, dilution and when the if there is one and if it does uh, get beat down to death I'm going to be all over it and I'm just going to buy a shit ton of this one because um, with a new cost structure and a new balance sheet and a new uh, earnings per share and a new much lower number of shares and all of that is just going to be a joy um, so yeah it's going to be a different company, and I think we're going to see better results in the future, uh, better consistent good earnings. Uh, have a wonderful day, everybody, and uh, please like the video and subscribe. I'll keep them coming. Have a great night.